So I'm super nervous at this point. All the voltages are there. If I've got something wrong, yeah, that's going to be a lot of work. So I've done as much checking as I can. I've checked the wiring on the back here. All right. Let's see what happens. So like a lot of people last year, I had a lot of time on my hands. So one of the things I've been looking for for quite a while is an original Fairlight. Now, the Fairlight that I've got in the studio already, that's called a Series 3. So there's a few different types of Fairlight CMI. There's the original Series 1, the Series 2, then the Series 2 was modified slightly with a processor upgrade, MIDI, and a few other things, uh, and turned into the Series 2X. The Fairlight I've got in the studio here is a Series 3, which by this point we were at 16-bit, 44 kilohertz, or even higher sample rates. So when I started looking for a Fairlight a few years back, I had to make a decision. It was either I was going to buy an original Series 1, 2, or 2X, or I was going to move to the more modern Series 3. Now, with the Series 3, obviously, you get a huge amount of flexibility. You get a lot of features that are not in the previous series. So my choice was to go with the Series 3. The reason I made that choice was basically around the sample length. So the Series 3 can record into the minutes of sample time, where the previous series can only record around one second of sample time. So by choosing the Series 3, it really was very much a sampler at this point. You could still do some fast Fourier transform um, wave manipulation, but it wasn't the same as the Series 1. We've all seen probably videos of people with light pens actually drawing in waveforms. You could do that, and you still can on a Series 3, but it doesn't quite work in the same way, and you're not really creating wavetables anymore. So slowly over time, I've really been looking out for an earlier series Fairlight at a reasonable price. Now, they come up occasionally, but most of the time they're in Europe or America, and shipping those back to Australia is phenomenal money. So it led me to this idea. What would you need to build a minimum viable product Fairlight CMI? So I sent an email to Peter Welk and asked him, do you have enough parts on hand to actually allow me to build a minimum viable product, CMI1? Now, the reason I chose the CMI1 is I have a huge box of parts that I've been collecting over the years. It was recommended by Peter not to go for a Series 1, but actually create something in between. We'll call it a CMI1X. So basically, we'll use the computer section from the later Series 2X or the Series 3 and we'll mix that with an original Series 1 master and voice card. So after a little while the parts arrive from Peter. Now as you can see I am using a blade. The reason for this was I was told to be exceptionally careful when opening this package. Um, I probably was being a bit overly careful <laughs> but uh, it'll make sense in a few moments. So the first card that's going to come out of the box is the floppy controller card, and it's the only card that I understand what it does at this point. So first of all, we've got the motherboard here. Quite a significant amount of rig work has been done on the back here. Um, obviously, this is dated from 1979. Yes, I'm not, not just making it up. So it's dated from 1979. This would have been a CMI-1 backplane or motherboard. So we've got some modification. This, um, as far as I can see, it's around where the processor and the RAM is. So I'm guessing some data lines actually uh, got moved around a little on the boards. So we've got the main voltages here. So we've got five volts and the ground. And over here, with a uh, fairly non-standard connector, 
we've got plus 12 volts, ground, and minus 12 volts. So the next thing I've got to do is make sure I've got all the boards that are needed to get the CMI up and running, and also do a bit of test fitting, make sure they all go in the right places, nothing got damaged, and also make sure I understand where to actually put these cards. And to my friend Chris, you will notice I don't have to use a ruler to get these cards in. They fit in so easily. So you can see here's the HCX which will be booting up the Fairlight and the very last card to go in will be the MasterCard. So obviously I'm going to have to build a case, I'm going to have to build a power supply, I'm going to have to do pretty much everything. That's all we've actually got for this build. So I'm going to build the power supply out of an old PC power supply that I had around and the yellow cable that you can see there is me shorting the power on pins and that should allow the actual power supply to start up. Unfortunately, even at this early stage, I'm not getting any voltages. The reason for this, I've actually shorted the wrong pins. Luckily there's a crowbar built into this power supply so if you do something incredibly stupid like this it'll cut all the voltages and nothing will come through. So finally we've got some voltages, I'm going to cut up this cable and start building the connectors that I need to connect to the back of the CMI. So as you can see I'm totally using the wrong tools here to actually crimp these connectors. Uh, it's a bit of painful work doing it this way. Anyway, onwards and upwards we've got a connection. So I've chosen to use different types of connectors for each of the voltages to make sure I can't suffer brain fade. And that's really the main thing that I'm always worried about in this build. The chance that I'll just think everything is right, I won't double check, and I'll turn something on and boom. That'll blow up a processor board or worse. So I'm going to check the voltages multiple times before we actually fire up the CMI. I just want to make sure absolutely I'm not going to fry something right at this early stage. Checking my voltages, I've got 5 volts, 12 volts, minus 12 volts and obviously a ground. So the next thing we need is some way to see the output from the CMI. So we're going to take a tap from the composite video output on the video board and put that straight into an old TV. Really simple to do. As you can see, it's just straight off that transistor for the signal. And then below that, there is a uh, ground, which is a common ground on the system. And we're away. We should have video. So once again, paranoia kicks in. I just want to check that I at least have the correct ground here before actually powering up the CMI. So old school TV turned on, ready to go. All right, let's check voltages one last time. Power supply on. Right, I am very nervous. Uh, oops, if I check voltage, not ohms. Right, we've got 12 volts there. 12. This should be our 5. Yep. This should be our negative 12. Yeah, a little low, but uh, negative 12. And these two should both be grounds, so we shouldn't get anything. So we've got our voltages, oh. we're good to go. Let's go back to where we came in. So I'm super nervous at this point. All the voltages are there. If I've got something wrong, yeah, that's going to be a lot of work. So, done as much checking as I can. I've checked the wiring on the back here. I've checked my voltages about 12 times. Um, so, when I power up, uh, I'm hoping to get something on the display. Um, hopefully, we should get a little prompt down the bottom. Now, the quality might be terrible. We should be lucky. Let's see what happens. Hmm. 
Nothing. Alright. That's not good. Um, try again. Oh. Sam, I. I am super excited. <laughs> it's up. It's up. It's actually up. Alright. Now the scary part, can we load a system disk? Systems. Let's try release 14. Alright. Well, it's booting. Yes! 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 I can't interact with it. I've got no keyboard or mouse. Yes! So that's it for this episode. Next time, I'll squeeze a cable between my fingers. I'll be trying to scratch my iPad with a screwdriver. And I'll be pointing at some wires. Until then, thank you for watching.